And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. We spoke and spent the first portion of the program talking with and hearing about the terrifying experience of a sex worker who was raped by a man she described as the devil. People with sinister ulterior motives make that industry very dangerous for women who are working in it. My next guest was able to escape that fast life long ago. She spends her time helping others who want to leave today. So Catherine, when someone sees an individual like Lauren telling her story, which is a heartbreaking story, a horrible story, being the victim of rape like that, but many people will say, well, she worked as a stripper. Then she went out on a date with somebody she didn't know. She agreed to have sex, but only stopped because there was no condom. So how do you uh, address those issues for those who are taking a look at a story and saying, it goes back to it's not safe with online dating or being, you know, set up to meet somebody. Uh, from my understanding, some women recruited her to meet this person. And I don't know, I'm not sure if they were paid to introduce her, but this happens to be this individual's fetish to fool the dancer into thinking he wants a relationship and then to rape. And because this is happening to so many that are afraid, unlike Miss Lauren, to come out and speak out about the dangers of working in the sex industry trade. I get that a lot of women work trying to make ends meet and they do what they have to do for whatever reason. It could be background issues, educational issues, fast money issues, but it is not safe. It is never okay to leave with strangers, to go anywhere in any profession really, because you don't know where the boogeyman is. And that's why it's so important that sex industry workers, dancers, what, whatever they want to label themselves as are safe and protected. Just because of the uh, title of what industry they work in makes them no less than a human. They still have rights. They're still somebody's daughter, somebody's mother, somebody's sister. And I say, I hope we ain't got too many grandmothers on the pole. <laughs> Well, it could be somebody's grandmother. But, Catherine, and, and, you know, hopefully you're helping her out. That's why she reached out to us through you. And one of the things that bothered me was when she said no one wants to date a stripper. So there seems to be some self-esteem issues there that you, I'm sure, will work on with her where she has, she will eventually have some self-worth because that struck you know, me, it was kind of shocking where she said, no one, no one, and that's what I believe, wants to date a stripper. And that's her belief. And that's a lot of young ladies who wanted the fast money. They weren't thinking about what kind of stigma is attached to sex industry workers. There's some who are stronger than others that don't care what you say. Um, about what they are, but some, especially those who have been through trauma and childhood abuse, sexual uh, molestation, incest, rape, the self-esteem has been bruised and in some broken. And that's where I come in with my expertise to do my best to give them what they think they allow somebody to take from them. No, it's our understanding that the suspect in this case, and we checked with the Houston Police Department, he has been arrested. He's being held in jail on a $75,000 bond. She was concerned that he had made bond and was out and about, but he is behind bars now, according to the Houston Police Department. And as soon as they get approval to release his mugshot, we will provide that uh, to our viewers here and give another update. But for those who are concerned uh, and they may work in the sex industry, your message to them is what? 
individuals like Lauren who have fallen into that trap of being raped, you know, and taken advantage of by someone who basically stalked her. They need to always be aware that there could be men or women, co-workers, anybody that are preparing to groom you. Be very careful. If you are working in the sex industry, let somebody know. Don't get in the car with somebody that you don't know. Don't go into their homes, you know, in secluded places. Be very careful. Let somebody know where you are at all times. And if you really want some help, come see me. We can figure it out, work it out, so that you can have all of your dignity, dignity, self-esteem, and worth kept in its proper place and help you to find what your highest potential is as a human being and what your calling will be to do in the time that you have left to live on earth. All right, Catherine, and I know you have helped a long list of people turn their lives around and we appreciate your time and what you do here in the community. And thank you for joining us here on The Factor tonight.